Go ahead and open Comp 3, Squash and Stretch. If you've ever seen a Saturday morning cartoon, you're probably already familiar with the animation principle of Squash and Stretch. Squash and Stretch has a, has a huge amount of potential to, to really inject a lot of fun and playfulness into your animation. Um, we can use squash and stretch in a strictly literal sense, you know, to communicate something about the material properties of this object. If it has a lot of squash and stretch, it, then that, you know, that implies it is very uh, elastic and flexible. Perhaps it's made of rubber. If it has very little squash and stretch, then uh, it's probably, you know, made of uh, sterner stuff, steel or a bowling ball or, or wood. So it can communicate to your audience on that level, but on another level, it can also communicate a lot about the, the mood and attitude that you're trying to project. Your, your animation may consist entirely of just graphics and text. You know, you, it, the point may not be to um, communicate some you know, literal uh, information about the material properties of an object, you may be using squash and stretch just to kind of inject a lot of fun and playfulness into your animation. You know, if you're creating something that uh, that's hum humorous or has a lot of whimsy, that might be appropriate. If you're uh, animating something, uh, you know, for children, a lot of squash and stretch would certainly be appropriate. So keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and uh, put this idea of squash and stretch into practice. And the big thing that you should remember about squash and stretch is that the object should always appear to maintain its volume. So what that means, imagine you're holding a balloon between your hands and you squeeze, you press your hands together, squeezing the balloon between your hands. It's going to compress in that direction, but that mean, but the, the air inside that balloon has to be displaced to somewhere. So you're going to squash the balloon one direction, but that balloon is going to expand in the other direction, always maintaining its volume. So that's the important thing to remember. So, for example, this ball that we're getting ready to animate, when it falls into frame and hits the ground, it's going to squash down towards the ground. That means we need to actually scale it up in the other dimension. It's going to expand horizontally if it compresses vertically. So let's go ahead and set our position keyframes first um, and then we'll do some squash and stretch by animating the scale parameter. So I'm going to select my shape layer here. That's this shape layer that with a red gradient in it the, that looks like a ball. And I'll hit P to pull up position. Click your stopwatch to set the first keyframe. And uh, this is actually where I want the ball to impact the ground. I'll just jump forward 10 frames and I'll just slide that keyframe over to there because that's where I want it to hit the ground.
Okay, so now your job is to take layer two, which is the word squash, and do the exact same thing. Make that text fall into screen and squash and stretch so it looks like it's made of, uh, of rubber.